Am I in the wrong for telling my wife that she's effing wrong and that my mom is right? I, 35 male, have been married to my wife, 32 female, for five years, and we've been struggling financially for the past few months. I lost my job about three months ago, and while I found part-time work, it doesn't pay nearly as much as before. We've had to cut back on a lot of things, but it feels like no matter what we do, we're still living paycheck to paycheck and even pulling from savings. Recently, my mom, 65 female, came over to visit, and she noticed how stressed I was about the money situation. She offered some advice on how we could save money, things like cutting down on takeout, meal prepping to avoid buying groceries multiple times a week, and switching to cheaper brands. My mom has always been frugal, especially when she was raising me and my siblings on a tight budget. I thought it made sense, especially since we're really trying to save wherever we can. I asked if she was willing to go through our spending and show where we could cut down. My wife agreed with this. She made a whole spreadsheet about our spending and we are spending way too much on fun stuff. We don't eat Starbucks every day and so on. It also became apparent that most of the fun spending was my wife's. To be honest, my wife didn't take the breakdown well and started arguing with my mom that her spreadsheet was wrong. She said that my mom's way of doing things is outdated and doesn't work for us. She doesn't want to give up buying organic produce and she likes having variety in what we eat each week. I try to explain that we need to make some sacrifices if we want to get out of this financial hole, but she kept insisting that things weren't as bad as I was making them out to be and that we just needed to ride it out. My mom left at this point and we were still arguing and she told me that she can't give up her takeout. She also went on about my mom being wrong. That's when I lost my patience and said, you're effing wrong. My mom is right. She managed to raise three kids on one income and we can't even cut back on groceries for a few months. My wife got really upset. She's barely spoken to me since and now I'm wondering if I went too far. One of your loved ones is holding this grudge. We had the opportunity to work on a project together. And at the time, you made me doubt myself. <laughs> when I openly suggested what I perhaps could add to our project, you seemed utterly confused. I felt like I'd seen another side to you. It was as if I would never be able to demonstrate what I had suggested. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, this isn't me. I don't think this is me. I'm so happy. <laughs> and it made me worry, were there other skills of mine you could be doubting? Are you okay, oh, Lily? oh, it's me. Yeah. I know it's me. I know it's me. And I know exactly who this is. This is Lucinda Fruits Price, isn't it? Well, mm, this might just confirm it for you. Got nothing but a t shirt on. I never felt so beautiful. Baby's eyes all now. <laughs> That's right, Louis. This actually was sent in by Lucinda Price, and it was when you were rehearsing for your comedy festival gig together last year. This is what she sent in. So, Louis and I did a live comedy show last year. This involved a lot of rehearsals, and we decided to do a few songs as part of the performance. Great songs, mind you. Five stars in the age, let it be known. I we did love. see this. Congrats. Have I said that before? It was five stars <laughs> we in the love, age. We love. <laughs> I know that Louis is a good singer, dancer slash actor because I've seen him on a dance floor and have at times heard him let out a little tune now and then. Now, when it came to the singing portion of our rehearsal, I asked if he thought we should harmonise on the songs. He looked at me as if I was an actual Martian in that moment. It was like I saw the dark side of him. He looked at me as if to say, in what world would you ever be able to hold a tune, let alone a harmonise? I felt my vision close in, my lips tremble, but I laughed it off. It was quite difficult to recover from. I was very self-conscious singing in front of him from that moment forward. She's fucking, she's lying. She's, she's lying. lying. She's being dramatic. <laughs> It made me think, what else does he doubt my talent Shut in? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I know exactly what she was doing typing that up. <laughs> she said, I need the villain edit to be his. <laughs> she, yeah, she achieved what she sought out to yeah. achieve. <laughs> my husband confessed that he's not attracted to me and that he has a side piece. Disclaimer, this is not my story time with me on Instagram. My husband is a complete nerd. He loves computers and he's a rocket scientist. A literal rocket scientist. He's always the smartest person in the room. He's the kind of person that reads one book a week. He's always trying to study and learn more. And frankly, he's... You know, like a nerdy looking guy. Because of all of this, I never thought that he would be the one to tell me that he was not attracted to me and that he had a side piece. And I'm sure you're wondering what I look like. I would say I'm a solid six. Not always the prettiest in the room. I'm very fit and I love beauty, so it means I take care of myself. People are always surprised that I'm married to the man I'm married to. Because he doesn't really dress up or fix himself the way I do. Worst part is that I never noticed that anything had gone wrong. I thought we had a great relationship. Sure, it's not like there's fiery passion between us, but I still love him and care for him. Four weeks ago, he came home from work and really bad mood and when i asked him he just blew up in my face said not attracted to you anymore and i'm seeing somebody else but now she's ghosting me he came home to complain that his side piece was ghosting him and it gets worse part two is up
My husband confessed that he's not attracted to me and that he has a side piece. He confessed to me that he was having an affair. He wasn't even sad or upset for me. He was more upset that his side piece was ghosting him. So as I broke down in tears and fell to the floor, I knew we've been married for 10 years, he pulls out his phone and starts calling her. That's when I heard him whisper under his breath, I'm taking back the apartment. That's when I blew up. I'm much taller and much stronger than him. So I pushed him down and pinned him to the floor, grabbed the phone from his hand and forced him to tell me the truth. He had been renting an apartment for her and he was giving her $4,000 a month. He and I always used to get in fights because he never wanted to pay for anything. He was the one that wanted the prince's treatment. He always claimed that our finances should be separate. But I was the one paying for dinners and dates. He was so hurt. And when I asked him why he was giving her so much money instead of me, he said because she's incredible. And I love her. That's when he started ranting about how everyone throughout our relationship always said that I was better looking and that I was a stronger and fitter one and that he was sick of being treated like that. And she treated him like a man. And what he said next is even worse. They had a child together. Am I overreacting after I asked my boyfriend why he won't take me on dates anymore and he listed a bunch of things that he doesn't like about me? My boyfriend, 27 male, and I, female, 28, have been together for almost five years. We have a pretty good relationship and we genuinely enjoy each other's company. No major problems at all this entire time. For the past year or so, however, he is not taking me out on a real date. He only ever just wants to do something simple like walk around the mall or order food and watch movies at home. I've been making date night or trip suggestions for months and he never shoots them down, but he just kind of moves past it without taking it seriously. Well, I finally became a bit upset and asked him why he doesn't ever make plans for dates or want to do anything romantic with me. It's really been making me question the relationship and hurt my self-esteem. He became pretty frustrated and basically listed out a bunch of things that he doesn't like about me. This was the gist of it. I don't try to dress nice when we go out, even though I dress up to go out with my friends. I don't ever wear makeup or do anything with my hair when I'm with him. I don't watch my weight. I don't clean up around our apartment. I have been neglecting him sexually. I sleep all day. I never cook for him. I force him to do all of the chores. I never want to try to do any of the stuff that he likes to do with him. And the last one, which really pissed me off, it's not like I'm going to come home and get my D stuffed afterwards anyway, his words. We haven't been speaking very much since. I feel so hurt, especially about the weight comment. I've been struggling with my weight and I'm about 40 pounds heavier than when we started dating. During this relationship, he's gained much more weight than me, like 100 pounds. But he started working out two years ago and now he's in great shape. This has been an insecurity of mine for a while, but this is the first time that he's ever made a comment about my weight before. Everything he said just feels so shallow and like he only cares about my looks and my body. I just need some advice, please. My boyfriend got my best friend pregnant. Just a little bit of background, me and my partner have been together for four years. His name is Toby and it's been the most amazing four years ever. He's honestly the love of my life. I genuinely feel like he would steal the moon if I asked him to, but we have had some problems with him cheating and also me thinking that he may be into men, but we've worked through all of that already. Early last year, my best friend went through a pretty rough patch with her toxic ex and basically long story short is he kicked my best friend out. She doesn't have any family here, so I offered for her to come stay with me and my partner at our house because we have a three bedroom house and I would honestly love for her to be around, especially because I really trust her. She moved in and everything was going great. Earlier that year, I started my dream job as a flight attendant and I was doing pretty well money-wise, so I didn't ask her to pay for rent or food or cooking or cleaning. But here's where it got weird. So obviously, as a lot of people know, as a flight attendant, you're gone for long periods of time. So I would be gone and my partner and her would have to be alone together because they both lived in the same house. I got home one night and basically me and my best friend were just talking about random bullshit and gossiping. And she casually brought up that Toby had said that she looked really nice in her dress on Saturday. I honestly didn't think too much of it and I just let the comment be. My boyfriend got my best friend pregnant and I want to add that my best friend always has random flings over so I thought that the baby would probably be one of theirs until the baby arrived and when I tell you this baby might as well have been a spitting image of my partner to the point where I literally said Oh my god, babe, she looks exactly like you. I honestly thought nothing of it at this time. I was just harmlessly joking and my partner just laughed and then Lucy was just looking at the baby. Honestly, I feel like there's not even a need for a paternity test because it's just so obviously his 
And when I brought this up to Toby, he was like, that is ridiculous. I can guarantee you it's not mine. I don't know how to feel. We recently got engaged in Italy and we're planning a wedding right now. I also asked him about it again last night because I just can't stop thinking about how much they look alike. Am I delusional? He's gone to stay with his parents now and I haven't even confronted Lucy about it because honestly, I don't even know where to begin with talking to her. I just can't stop thinking about the fact that while I was flying, they were always home alone together. What do I do? I really need advice. Am I in the wrong for not ordering any food so I wouldn't have to split the bill? I-27 male have been a part of a small friend group, around eight people total, basically since college. For some background, two of them from the group, Susan and Craig, are just absolute leeches. Going out for lunch? Expect them to order the most expensive thing on the menu, then feed you some sob story about their finances and then dump half the bill on you. Last weekend, Dan, one of the people from the group, told me about a casual dinner. I told him how if Susan or Greg were there, then I wouldn't be able to come. He tells me that they would be there, but I should just put my opinions aside and come just once. This is kind of where I might be the a-hole. I agreed with him and told him that I would be there. I show up and we all get to talking. Everyone began putting in their orders. Most of them spent about $40. There were only about six people there. When it gets to Susan and Greg, they both order expensive dishes, around $200. When it was my turn to order, everyone looked at me, but I just pick up the menu and point to the $4 Miller Lite and send the waiter away. Dan asked why I hadn't ordered anything and all I said was that I lost my appetite. The other two friends got up as well and canceled their orders and just had drinks. After the main courses came out, I saw Susan and Craig picking at their food. The waiter then brings over the check. Greg then grabs the waiter and asks him to split the check six ways. I stand up and correct him saying that the check was to be split three ways. Greg looks at me confused and asks why since we always split the bill. I remind him that three of us had not eaten any food, so we would just be paying for our drinks. So basically at the end of the night, Dan, who probably only ate about $50 worth of food, was stuck with the $146.98 check at the end. I swear I saw his jaw drop when he picked up the receipt. I saw the $10 towards the check and said goodbye to everyone and walked out. The next morning, I found my phone full of texts from Greg and Susan telling me I'm an a-hole for not ordering any food and forcing them to pay for more than they had accounted for. I honestly laughed because the stakes alone were more than what they had paid, but to each their own right, I also got a lot of messages from Dan saying that I could have just not come instead of pulling that stunt and getting him stuck with an outrageous bill. So am I in the wrong? My husband confessed that he has a kid with another woman. Not only had he given her an apartment and $4,000 a month, he also got her pregnant. One minute I was cooking dinner for him, waiting for him to come home. The next he's telling me that not only is he not attracted to me, but he has somebody else. And that he loves her. He was beyond devastated. He told me the reason why he was angry was because she was ignoring him. And that he didn't deserve that treatment from her. When he finally took a second to look up at me, his face completely changed. He actually apologized and said that he understands how heartbroken I was. Then he told me that after years of people telling him that I was too good for him he had had enough and that's why he started the affair he told me that i needed to let him go and that he wasn't good enough for me that all he would ever do is continue breaking my heart that i should find somebody else blah 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 i didn't even have to kick him out he grabbed his pajamas and toothbrush and left i am so depressed i wake up crying every day you know that horrible feeling when you know something's wrong as soon as you wake up and the worst part is on facebook they announce that they're engaged so now he's asking for the divorce my bestie thinks i shouldn't give it to him did i make his life harder or should i just give him the divorce what should i do this secret came from listener Emma. I found myself in the soul-crushing position of right person, wrong time, and I don't know what to do. I met a guy we'll call Cam on a night out with my girlfriends, and we ended up sleeping together. Fast forward two years, and I bump into Cam at a cafe. We hit it off once again. I decided to shoot my shot and asked him to come to my house for dinner that night. We slept together again that night. It nice! And it felt incredibly natural. The next morning, he told me that he had a girlfriend and that it was a relatively new relationship. Oof. I asked him what he wanted to do and he said, spend more time with me. It's now been four months of both girls. We've been spending a lot of time together while his girlfriend works out of town. He keeps telling me how much he cares about me and that he wants to be with me but doesn't know how to tell his girlfriend. Do I stay and tell him to choose me or do I go and move on? Oh boy, do I have an update for you. Oh, I love when they start like this. It. After over four months of being the other woman, I finally said, pick me, choose me, but I was taken for a fucking ride. Oh, of course. Jeez. So it was definitely a case of me looking for an answer and not getting the one I wanted. I called Cam the weekend after the episode came out. Whoa. <laughs> sat him down and told him that I no longer wanted to be part of his life if he wasn't ready to commit to one person and one relationship. Surprise, surprise, he cried again. <sighs> Are you crocodile, sorry. Crocodile yeah, tears. crocodile tears. I said, if you really wanted to be with me, you would have known that a long time ago. But now it just feels like you want two girlfriends. Mm. He eventually stopped crying, looked at me and said, please don't tell Felicity. <gasps> 
I said, we'd request given your circumstance. Cam cried a bit more and said he was in love with us both and couldn't choose. I told him this response was all I needed and wanted nothing more to do with him. A few days later, I decided to find Felicity and tell her everything. Mm -hmm. I sent her a short DM over Instagram explaining that I think we've been dating the same person and asked if she wanted to jump on a call. Felicity and I spoke for about 30 minutes. I filled in the gaps of her experiences with Cam and apologized profusely for my behavior. It was a tough one. She asked me if I was only telling her because I was no longer with Cam and wanted revenge or because I cared about her enough to tell the truth. I had to be honest with her and myself. My intentions weren't 100% pure, nor were they well informed. While I didn't want Cam lying and cheating anymore, I also wanted him to be unhappy, even if it was to the detriment of Felicity. I explained that as best as I could, and she ended the conversation with a simple thank you. Not long after our chat, Cam hard launched his relationship with her on social media and continued to post pictures of them together. In hindsight, I absolutely romanticized the idea of being the other woman. Wow. I'm genuinely okay, and the fact that I haven't cried or felt heartbroken is probably enough for me to know that right person, wrong time was a low key joke. Anyway, thanks for being the best podcast on the planet and helping Aww. me navigate this. Love you all, Emma. In brackets, long live the shushies. My husband said that I wasn't attractive enough to cheat on him. My husband is absolutely gorgeous and everybody says so, and I consider myself pretty but unremarkable. My features aren't exactly a supermodel, but I do my best with what God gave me. Compared to my husband, I might as well just be a troll, honestly. Even my own mom thought that he must be in the closet or hiding sketchy things because of how much more attractive he is than me. It's the first thing people notice when we're out. I've had women flirt with him right in front of my face while we're out and I've had two women that I actually know personally try to get with him behind my back. Honestly, even I question why he's with me sometimes. I'm definitely super insecure about it, but my husband has always told me that he loves me and thinks I'm beautiful and not to listen to other people. Yesterday changed everything. I bumped into an old boyfriend from college and we ended on really good terms, but it turns out that he's doing really well for himself and in his career. I'm looking to change jobs and I'm pretty good at what I do. So we exchanged LinkedIn's. There was absolutely nothing that was inappropriate about our conversation. And I would have been absolutely fine if my husband was there to hear the whole entire conversation himself. My husband said that I wasn't attractive enough to cheat on him. My husband started a fight with me the minute that I came home. He said that he read through my LinkedIn messages and he swore that my ex was flirting with me. I told him that he wasn't. And then that's when my husband started making fun of my ex his looks and this was some of the cruelest things that i have ever heard my husband say i told him to stop and that we could talk about it when he wasn't acting this way he said that if that guy became my co-worker and i cheated on him and then he just scoffed and he was like, you're not attractive enough to cheat on me and not enough to keep me either. I was absolutely speechless. He then proceeded to slam the door to our bedroom and he locked me out for the night. So I went to sleep on the couch and the next day I woke up perfectly tucked into bed. I can vaguely remember him waking me up, but today he was incredibly sweet to me and he kissed me before he left for work. I can still remember the play-by-play -play of what happened, but it's like my memory was outside of my body for some reason. Reason. I have literally never heard him say something like that to me ever. I just feel so upset and uncomfortable. Like, what do I even say to him? How do I just ask him what possessed him to say the things he did and if he really meant what he said? Am I in the wrong for ruining my friend's vacation? I, female 38, just got back from vacation with two of my longtime friends, Kate, female 40, and Mary, female 38. I've known them both since university, and we've always been close. The three of us have been planning this Bali trip for a few months, along with our husbands and their kids. They both have children under five, while my husband, Jake, male 45, and I are child-free. We agreed to split the cost of the four-bedroom villa three ways, and everything seemed fine at first. Jake and I arrived in Bali earlier than the rest of the group because we had different flights. Once we got to the villa, we waited to choose rooms with our friends and didn't mind when they both chose the ones with en-suites. We had a great time during the trip. Jake and I did some couple activities, massages, hiking, dinners, but we also spent time with Kate and Mary and their families whenever it worked out for everyone. To be nice, I even surprised them with massages to give them a break. The only thing that made me uncomfortable was whenever I would order a drink, a cocktail before dinner, or a glass of wine with meals. I get comments like, 
Oh, you're drinking again? For context, I'm a social drinker and don't drink often. Well, we were on vacation and I didn't think it was a big deal, especially since our husbands were drinking too. I just ignored the comments so I could enjoy the trip. On the last night, Jake and I had made plans with the guys to go out and Kate and Mary said that they were staying in the pack. Jake convinced me to join him and since it was the last night of our vacation, I didn't want to stay in either. We went out and had a great time. We got home at 1 a.m. and I passed out straight after. The next morning was a bit chaotic with everyone packing and checking out, but we all made it back home without an issue. We had booked business class seats back so we were separated during the flight and said quick goodbyes at the airport. A week after returning home, I got a long text from Kate saying that both she and Mary want to reduce contact with me because I had ruined their vacation. They mentioned several things, like me drinking every night, that I wasn't acting like a girl's girl, that I booked different flights, didn't hang out with them enough, and that I was selfish for not helping with their kids. She even said I was just focused on partying and not acting my age. This message really hurt me. I cried after reading it and I honestly don't know what to think. I thought I was just enjoying my vacation, but clearly they had a different view. I haven't responded yet and my husband has been asking what's been bothering me, but I don't know what to say. Am I in the wrong for how I acted on the trip? Am I in the wrong for not telling my husband's family that I speak their language? My husband, Peter, 29 male, and I, 27 female, have been married for about three years. We have one child together and I was pregnant with our second. I'm Western Canadian while he's from Germany. We lived in Canada for a long time, but because of inflation, moving back to Germany seemed like a better option for us. We bought a nice house in Hanover where Peter is from. The day after our flights to Germany, we all visited Peter's family. This was the second time I've seen them. The first was at our wedding. They greeted us and brought us inside of the house, fussing over my son. We had dinner and soon left the house, wanting to settle into our new home. We visited Peter's family often for the next few months. But I had started to realize that they would sometimes speak about me in German. They would make rude comments on my hair my makeup, question my fashion choices, and overall were just very unkind to me. They also said mean things about my pregnant belly which I was already insecure about. I ended up talking to my husband about this. I told him that I didn't like the way that they were treating me. I said I hated how every choice I made was judged. He told me that he would talk to his family. The next time we went to his parents' house, there were no more mean comments. For about three months, it was like nothing ever happened. I gave birth to a perfect baby girl and we named her Lilith. Peter's family was very upset when they heard the name. If you didn't know, Lilith means ghost or of the night. We didn't pick this name because of its meaning. My middle name is Lilith, along with my mom's, my grandma's, and even my great grandma's. For a while, I didn't visit my in-laws. I didn't want to hear them talk about how I shouldn't have named my daughter Lilith. But yesterday, we saw them again. It was my mother-in-law's birthday. As soon as we showed up, things started to go badly. Everybody wanted to hold Lilith, which made my mother-in-law upset because people weren't paying attention to her and made me overwhelmed. I was going through a pretty bad postpartum depression and it was still pretty early to see people. I let people look at her but declined when anyone asked to hold her. During dinner, I heard my sister-in-law talking to my mother-in-law in German. I heard her complaining about how she couldn't hold my baby. My sister-in-law even had the audacity to call me, and I quote, a fat, ugly, hokey addict. I turned to my sister-in-law and mother-in-law and told them off in German. I basically said that I've always known what they said about me, but calling me names was the last straw. I also mentioned how I've known German for almost all my life. The table instantly blew up. People were yelling at me because apparently this was all my fault. I left with Peter and we haven't talked to them since. So, am I in the wrong? My husband wants me to use a strap on. What do I do? Come here, this is not my story time with me on Instagram. Hubby and I have been married for four months. That is not a very long time. Before we got married, he told me that he was bi and I totally accepted this. This was actually never a problem for me because I am also bi. We are very open-minded as a couple. We even started going to some swingers clubs. This allowed us to explore safely and without us getting jealous or anything weird happening. We did this for three weekends straight, but then we decided to take a break. It was just a bit too much. Also, there was a couple within the swingers club that was constantly asking us to come over to their place and we kept saying no because that was a big no-no for us anything that would happen would have to stay in the club if you know what i mean but three things happened as a consequence of the exposure to all of this i realized that my sexy life with my husband was not that great he's not the most experienced person but i knew all of this when we got married i just want him to learn and be open to learning but so far he has changed nothing and he also started preferring men when we went to the swingers club now i did notice this but i didn't want to say anything to him because it was kind of awkward and then finally he asked me for a strap. Now this completely took me by surprise. I didn't know he'd want to ever do something like that. The problem is that I don't want to. I actually don't think I would be comfortable doing that to him. But at the same time, I don't want him doing that with anyone else. Which is exactly what he told me when I told him that I didn't want to do it. He actually told me that he wants to find somebody at the swingers club who could do it for him. We even talked about him going by himself, which I have to say yes to because otherwise I don't want to be responsible for that. All of this has become very complicated and I really regret going to the club in the first place. I also regret us being so open with these things because now he's asking for more and more. And I am not comfortable with him doing any of these things. When I told him that I wasn't comfortable with this, he got mad at me and he's been giving me the cold shoulder ever since. We were engaged for eight months, so we really actually don't know each other as well as I want to. And I did tell my best friend about this and she doesn't think it's normal. In fact, she doesn't think that we should have gone to the swingers club and that I need to retract on basically everything. And essentially ask for a monogamous relationship. Now I'm afraid that he's gonna wanna leave me if 
I do this? Am I overreacting? Did I just do it to please him? Or should I actually be freaking out? Because I don't think this is normal. I don't want to do that to my husband. Ew. What should I do? Bye. Imagine having a mother-in-law from hell. You see, when you met your husband on vacation, he was perfect, handsome, loving, considerate, and very, very funny. He talked to you about his mom. After his dad passed away, he decided to move back in with his mom. She has a tendency to become very depressed, and you couldn't help but think, gosh, he's such a good person. You happen to both live in the same city. You begin to date, and after two months, he insists that you meet his mom. And you just know it in your heart that he's going to be proposing soon, so you accept. You show up to an unexpectedly big and beautiful house. Your future mother-in-law greets you with a smile on her face and beautiful diamonds on her neck. And you happen to both love fashion, so you connect right away when you compliment her on her beautiful Chanel. And she's cooked an elaborate dinner, something really special. She asks about your lineage, but you don't come from a well-off family. You tell her you work for everything you have and you own your own business, but she's not impressed. When you reach for that second glass of wine, she says, a drunk woman is very unattractive. Go to part two. Imagine you have a mother-in-law from hell. She hates that you come from a poor family. In an effort to get her to know you better, you invite her out to lunch. Just you and her. And the first thing she says to you is, she enjoys your creativity when it comes to fashion. She never would have thought to wear an orange blouse and green trousers, but that's just her. And she judges every single plate of food that comes out, eventually saying that she will be the one to pick the restaurant next time and the cherry on top. When she tells you that her son has many women after him and that they are all beautiful, Beautiful, all rich, but that for some reason he's chosen you. So she suggests that you keep a close eye on him. You tell her that you trust him. Out of nowhere, she says, I know for a fact he's talking to girls. He's planning something behind your back. Might be proposing. You know she said this only to ruin the surprise. How could she? And she was right. Two days later, you show up to his house. It's covered in pink roses. He proposes outside. And when you walk in, your entire family and friends are there. And your mother-in-law? Well, she's crying. Part three is imagine and you have a mother-in-law from hell who's already spoiled the surprise of your engagement and she spent the next three days crying in her room your fiance tells you she's just emotional because she wishes her husband was still alive fast forward six months after the wedding you find out you're pregnant and everyone is so happy she begins to cook every single one of your meals and at first you feel so grateful and then you begin to feel sick you feel dizzy almost drunk and she tells you that's normal you tell your husband you want to go to the doctor but she insists that you don't after a week you can't take it anymore doctors run some tests and ask you if you've taken any chemicals and of course you say no but your husband starts investigating your husband finds an unlabeled bottle in the kitchen and when confronted your mother-in-law denies that it was hers you are both afraid for the life of your child you're both convinced your mother-in-law was poisoning you she still denies it the baby is born healthy are you letting her see the baby or are you getting revenge what would you do my husband Josh and I haven't had sex in five years, and I don't think we ever will again. Oh, oh shit. I've had some pretty average relationship experiences prior to marrying Josh. One night out, I went out with my girlfriends, and I met this guy we'll call Brody. Brody and I started dating. It was hot and heavy and became a whirlwind of drama and heartbreak, and I had no idea how to get myself out. After a year of being financially dependent on Brody, I went out and got myself a proper career job. At this new job, I met my now husband, Josh. We became friends very fast and were soon completely inseparable. And it truly shone a light on how unhappy I was. And so after four months of a beautiful friendship, we ended up sleeping together. I knew it was wrong, but I needed an out and knew that once we slept together, there was no saving my relationship with Brody. And if I'm being honest, I still slept with Brody while also pursuing this wonderful new connection with Josh. Josh was aware of the overlap too, yet he loved and accepted me regardless. I felt extremely guilty and never came clean about cheating on Brody because it felt like that would cause more harm than good. Instead, I just ended things. Cut to now, I'm still with Josh. It's been seven years in total and we're completely in love. He is my favorite person and my best friend. We've been married now and I love our life together. However, here is where Karma has come to claim her victory. My husband Josh and I haven't had sex in over five years, and I see this as my punishment for betraying Brody. Josh has never mentioned it, but I believe he is asexual. We had sex at the beginning of our relationship, but after a while he stopped initiating and would reject my advances claiming all different reasons. The times I've put myself out there and tried to initiate sex, my husband gets very awkward. He sort of uncomfortably chuckles and removes himself from the situation. I love Josh and have remained faithful to him. 
I knew that when we got married, I would likely be giving up ever having sex again. But to me, he's worth it. Also, it's what I deserve. In the seven years we've been together, I haven't wanted anyone else and I don't anticipate wanting anyone else. I'm happy with my husband, but a part of me will always miss what I gave up. I've come to terms with what I've done and perhaps that's why I'm okay with how things turned out. I'm a cheater and karma is a bitch. Frankie.